introduce you. So um, good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to Jose Gonzalez Munoz. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Jose. Mm -hmm. um, Jose is uh, one of the owners of uh, Canzanet, uh, which is a winery uh, in Mallorca. And um, I discovered the wines from here when I was actually in the um, in the Rioja tasting, um, the symposium in Rioja for the Institute of Masters of Wine. Um, and Jose's wines were there and I was so impressed. And then I did some research and I found out that, you know, these funny words on the label like Gorgolasa uh, are actually the indigenous grape varieties from this area. And um, they're beautifully grown and the wines really excite me. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Jose to um, to basically to talk a little bit about um, where the where the winery is, the idea of the project, and if anyone wants to ask any questions, please feel free um, because it is it is that's what we're here for. We're here to join in, have a nice glass of wine. I'm going to put the screen share on and um, and just just ask questions and find out how how these wines are made, what the reason is behind them, um, and things like that. So over to you, Jose, if you'd like to um, talk a little bit about, uh, about your project and how long it's been going on for, that would be amazing. Well, the, 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 the wine year, uh, Canchanet, is, is a very, very small, pro well, it's, it's a very small project. It's two hectares in the northern <coughs> uh, Mallorca, uh, situated between, the wine year is situated between the uh, Alcudia and, and Pollensa, uh, on, over, and, 12 meters above the, the sea level overlooking the Poyesa Bay and the foothills of the of Sierra de Tramuntana. No? Um, uh, there are certain things that they make uh, a special terroir, yeah? especially if there are, I will say, three things that they are very, they conform the, the, this, this, this terroir. In one <coughs> way, for, in one side is, is the, the, the rain, that is coming from the mountains, <coughs> that this is going to, to, to get in the soil. Uh, so the, the wine yard is going to have a, a fantastic canopy of three, three meters and, and, and over. And this is one of the, of the things. The other thing is, of course, the soil. Uh, this kind of limestone soil, there are two kinds of soils in Mallorca. You will find in other places the red soil, uh, that this is very good for the cayet and so, but I think this limestone soil is very interesting for, for these varieties, to fix these varieties. And the other side is the proximity of the sea. Uh, we are overlooking the Poyensa Bay, so, uh, and that means that uh, all this make, uh, make a different thing because there is a thermal wind that is coming during the summer, <clears throat> and, uh, and this thermal, thermal wind uh, is going to, to make a, a lot of freshness and uh, apart from the salinity that we are going to receive from the sea, but uh, it's, it's going to, to, to make it completely different, the, the microclimate uh, here than in uh, one kilometer uh, inside the, 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 the island. Yeah, because yeah, I wondered, Jose, with your wine, uh, how it retains such freshness. I know some of that comes from the grape variety. But uh, the actual, uh, the lift, the zestiness, the, it's just lovely. I mean, you know, they're very fragrant and light bodied, whereas you'd expect a wine from a warm climate like Mallorca to be quite full on and rich and ripe and rounded. But these are lovely and delicate, aren't they? And that's because of the, uh, the cooling wind and the, and yeah. the, 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 the varieties. <laughs> I mean, I mean Having this kind of water all the, 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 the whole year, I think uh, there is only a stress at the end of the, of the, of the maturation and having this wind, all this make, make the, the something a, a bit different. Yeah. And then I think this, um, uh, this protect for over maturation and, uh, well, and then minimum treatments, minimum, uh, to, to, to have the minimum treatments, to have uh, the minimum, uh, sulfites add uh, to, 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 to keep the, 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 the acidity. I don't know. The idea of the project is making, uh, I won't say Atlantic wines in the Mediterranean because it will be a bit, uh, a bit crazy, but something like something no so, no so heavy, no so tannic, yeah, like yeah. Uh, the Mediterranean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And tell me, I've got my pointer out on the um, on the map. Where, if you tell me to go north or south, where exactly are the vineyards? Yeah, you see, you see the Poyenza Bay. Yeah. Here. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I will say I'll, I'll show you on my on my map. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll stop just, sharing for a minute. There we go. It's just it's just here. I don't know if you can see it. It's just yes. here. Yeah. So we're looking, yeah, there is a road, there is a road uh, coming from Alcudia to Poyenza on the back. So it's, it's just in, on this road, one kilometer here, overlooking the Poyenza Bella. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's beautiful. Yeah. And that, so you're saying there's limestone soils there with, which give yeah. that, add to that minerality. And obviously mm -hmm. they come from when the sort of sea was sitting over the land as, as such. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit like shabbly in effect, the soil. Um, because of the yeah, sort of the, the, the the yellow of the limestone, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and that's and that gives you that minerality in the wines. Mm -hmm. And and so, how many years ago did your project start, Jose? I start on two thousand and eight. Yeah, and two thousand and eleven was my my first uh, harvest. Okay. So uh, yeah, it, all the complication come with the with the. With the first harvest, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you start from scratch? So did you grow the vines from scratch? You saw a nice site. You decided which vines would grow, or did you take old vineyards? No, no, no. I, I, I start from zero. Uh, I decide. I decide to to well. I find a place. I, I think there was a place where there are there, there were figs. We'll we'll see some some. Uh, and the places, the figs substitute uh, the the wine when the phylloxera came. So uh, I'm sure that there, 100 years ago yeah. uh, there was wine in the wine yard in this in this in this field. So I like the I like the place. I like the the, the field. I, and I started to plant the the the, 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 the varieties. I used two foreigners, Merlot and Shirat. Cabernet, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it in the Mediterranean. I don't like it at this. Uh, of course, I like it uh, in, in in other altitude, in other uh, higher altitude, yeah, higher altitude or, or yeah. in yeah, latitude, yeah, but not in the in the Mediterranean because the lake of of maturation. Uh, and I, I what I like it from the foreigners was the Merlot and the Shira. Shira is very Mediterranean. Merlot, mm. I think, goes still well at this uh, latitude. Yeah. And then I choose two of uh, two indigenous. The most known will say uh, Cayet and Manto Negro. Cayet is always more in the other kind of soil. So more... how do you spell Cayet, Jose? Cayet is... C-A-L-L-L-L-E-E-T. Cayet. Cayet, okay. Because all these are new to us, these varieties. Yeah, Cayet, yeah. Cayet and Manto Negro, maybe they are, they are the two more common uh, indigenous uh, grapes in Mallorca. Yeah. You know, when they, after the phylloxera, uh, they start to plant the French ones, especially, well, Cabernet, Merlot, Syrah, and, and then the indigenous one, uh, the, the, the local ones, uh, they maintain the Manto Negro and they maintain the Cayet, but not the Gorgollasa. The Gorgollasa has a problem, it's, it's uh, no, the Gorgollasa didn't, they didn't want to, to plant again. Why? Because uh, it's, it's very, very, is low productive. I mean, the, the production is very is very small. Uh, you, you maybe you can have three, four uh, raisins in in a in a in a in a wine. So uh, this is this is the Gore Galassa. This is how you spell it, guys. If you can see that, yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Gore Galassa, and this is the main yeah. one in the Sevilla. Uh, uh -huh. And that is, as you say, Jose, uh, a huge as, problem. As Gorgias, it was no very yeah. productive, and at the same time, the degree of the alcohol was very low. Yeah. And at this at this moment, uh, we are speaking always about between twelve and thirteen uh, uh, degrees. And at this moment, they were looking for a high degree of alcohol. They didn't plant, so they nearly disappear. Uh, but Can Rivas keep some uh, some uh, vines, and uh, from there. It becomes the Gorgoyasa that is actually. In fact, Canchanet, uh, ourselves, me with uh, 
Raúl Pérez, that was the, at, at the moment the, my, my... That was Raúl uh, Pérez, guys, who's very famous for doing a lot of um, adventurous things with Spanish wine, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. and uh, we decided to do the red wine out of the, the Corbellas. And we were the first, the first to do it. And in fact, in the 2011, with our first husbands, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, put the name Tierra de Mallorca in it. We have to 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 it goes to the market, went to the market like a house, like a like a table wine. Yeah. Because because they didn't allow us to 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 use it because it was even so, it was even first. though it was an indigenous variety, you weren't allowed to use it as yeah, a yeah, uh, yes. quality wine. Next year, next year on the 2012, yeah. they accepted, but uh, but uh, in the 2011, it was uh, I mean we we went out like a table wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I have to say. Um, I used to say I was a Grenache girl, but I think I might be becoming a Gorgalasa girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it is, uh, it is utterly, I mean, what would, you, uh, what would you say, what variety would you say it's similar to in its style? Oof. Would you say a little bit like Nebbiolo perhaps? Um, Pinot Noir a little bit? Maybe. Sometimes, yeah, they, they, they say the Pinot Noir or the Gorgalasa is like the Pinot Noir of the Mediterranean. Uh, but this kind of verbal thing uh, and Mediterranean and, and so is is very I mean very special yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I won't I won't say sometimes they they someone they say from the Jura there is one uh, but I don't know I um, I don't know it's very particular yeah it's very yeah. <laughs> special yeah. and and it's very impressive Jose because obviously you know as you say when you started planting these vineyards. You were looking at wines that were, you know, you were competing against wines that were 14%, 14 and a half, and that's what the market was looking for then. But you had the foresight to see that uh, in, in the future, people would be looking for fresher styles. And now this is 12 and a half percent and everyone is loving it because it's just not too heavy. It's got a lovely freshness. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just sits really nicely. So, um, so I bet you're pretty happy with uh, the way the market has gone mm -hmm. since 2011. In any case, in any case, I think it's, it's a movement that is true, and I and I like it. I always like Bourgogne more than than than. So it's, it's a question that, that I did what I, I wanted, but there is a still uh, the, the people is, speak about more light wines and so, but still I, I think uh, there is there is much more to do. Yeah, yeah because. Yeah. Uh, in the end, yeah, there is a lot of uh, heavy wines in the market, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are. But it's interesting to see there's a lot of interest in Mallorcan wines and the island wines um, mm -hmm. because people are recognizing that there's real quality coming. And I think it is a lot to do with your winds and the fact that you're so close to the sea and the fact you have these amazing indigenous varieties, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And because these indigenous varieties, they... they, they I, uh, they they can receive the sun uh, without getting uh, with 14, 15, 16 degrees. They, they are they are ready to to for for this kind of sun. They are really the pure Mediterranean. So and this is very very important. I mean because uh, the Gorgolasa, I, I even when I, I lose the acidity one year, but it was not raining. I I, I keep one more one more uh, month, and I mean I reach. 12 and 12.8 degrees but not even the 13 degrees i mean it's, it's so yeah. uh, this is very very particular yeah mm -hmm. and and how about the yields on uh Grespasa, uh sorry gorgolasa I, I you know my pronunciation is so bad but how about the yields are the yields very low that you get from the vine the the uh the sort of tons per hectare or the hectoliters per hectare that you get from the vine are they very low yeah, they are, they are, well, normally uh, you, you, you work with the more or less 2.2, 2.5 uh, kilos per, per vine. Yeah. And, um, and with Gorgoyasa, maybe you, you can find 1.8, 1.5, something like that, yeah. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again, Jose, so you can show us exactly. Uh, we can see where Kanzanet is in the hills in this wonderful photo which makes us all want to go to Mallorca uh, and sort of go swimming off the coastline there because, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's nice in these times to think of a holiday destination as well, Jose. We'll all be out there next year to see you. 
you know, to come and help you sort of tend to your vines. Mm -hmm. um, it, and this year, the vintage, is it, uh, is it a normal vintage or is it an early vintage? What stage are the vines at at the moment? Uh, the vintage is, is doing is doing very well. It's going to be a normal vintage. The only um, the only problem we have had this year is the humidity. I mean, the, uh, there has been a lot of rain, uh, and we have to have uh, some problems with the um, with the mildew and um, mildew powder. I don't know how they call it, oidio. Yeah, or yeah, or oidium. Yeah, exactly. Oidium, yeah, 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 yeah. So. This maybe has been the, the, the main thing of the of this year. This mm. uh, April, April, May has been uh, a lot of rain going on, and but apart from this, that just a, a bit, and we we, we stop it. Uh, I hope. Uh, apart from this, I think it's going to do a, a normal. It's going to be a normal year. Yeah. And when do you normally harvest? Do you harvest at the end of August or does it wait till September? Till normally, it normally the, the first week of, the, of, uh, of uh, September. Maybe the, 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 the earliest year was the end of August, 26, 27. And normally are from the 3rd to the 7th or 8th of, of, uh, of uh, September, yeah. Okay. Um, we, and I'm going to ask you mm -hmm, a little sorry. bit more about the Sabia. Um, so this is 2016, and it's still obviously exceptionally young. These wines, this this one uh, itself, uh, is it made to age for another 10, 15 years? It'll improve, get a little bit of those more meaty tones. What do you, um, what are the 11s tasting like now? Um, well, the, the three things is are, is the, the pH is, is very low, um, acidity is still, uh, is still good. And and uh, and degree well is pretty enough to 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 with twelve. So I think I, I mean at the moment the only thing I can taste is two thousand and eleven and two thousand and twelve. But uh, but I think it's, it's going to I don't know if ten twelve years I don't know. But the 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 triangle between acidity and pH and uh, and it's, it's it's good enough to 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 to, to resist and to to. to go further yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah no it tastes it tastes like it's got longevity in it and it'll just be exciting to open in a few years but i'm not sure if mine will last that long um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but jose um i'm going to play in the background the video you sent me as well um of the vineyards who took the video a friend of mine uh i was i was have to i, I have to go to to Palma yesterday to Mallorca and uh, a friend of mine did it yeah, yeah, with yeah. my with my son yeah <laughs> yeah no it's really good uh, and I'm not sure I'm going to share the um, sound on here uh, because just the, this morning I was playing it and Jim was like geez what's that 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 amazing sound of bird song and it was very mindful in the office my husband shares my office obviously well I share his whatever way you want to look at it uh, but. It was wonderful because the birds, I don't know if you can all hear. Yeah, the birds it just sound amazing. Um, so we'll leave that on in the background to keep us soothing and calm on a th Thursday evening mid COVID, sort of, you know, coming out of COVID. Uh, but these are the vineyards. Will you talk us through them a little bit, Jose? Yeah, well, as you can see, I mean, the canopy is, is, is fantastic. I mean, uh, we have a, a canopy of maybe three meters, three and a half meters. Uh, what is a problem? It is it's a big problem uh, because it, it gives us a lot of work to do. I mean, uh, for a two hectares uh, project that is very, very small, not even two hectares, it's 1.7 hectares. I mean, uh, we have been working nearly three people uh, all these months, the, 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 last, the last three months, because it's very, very, very hard to maintain all this uh canopy uh very well alienated uh, without and and taking take it off the 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 stacks of uh, vegetation and so so it's very nice but it's very hard is the only is the only problem it's it's it's, not, it's it's interesting because uh, uh the the wines instead of when when they are getting older uh at the moment, from 2008, they are already they are already 12 years old. Should 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 uh, be more more calm, you know. But they are they are 
as the roots they are growing and, and they are finding water on the on the on the soil yeah. and they are so they are they are they are growing like uh, like hell it's true that in summer the 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 phreatic level is going to to decrease and they are going to to, to pass the the, the hydric stress uh, but uh, and sometimes we have to irrigate just a bit uh, yeah but uh, but just in in the in the pure summer i would say in august and if we don't have a storm uh, at, the, at, the, at the moment. If we have a storm at the, at the middle of hours, it's, it's no problem. But otherwise, they, they are going to, 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 you need to irrigate a, 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 just a bit. I do not only, yes, for the stress, yeah, to, to avoid a bit the, the, the stress, but also to maintain the, the degree, the alcoholic degree uh, in certain levels. Yes. Because uh, if I see, for example, the Merlot, we are seeing the, the, the Merlot, the Merlot, I mean, uh, if uh, maybe the, you need a one more week in the phenolic for the phenolic maturation, and you see that uh, they are not ready yet, but you have uh, maybe 14 degrees uh, alcohol. Okay, I prefer to irrigate a bit, to, to add a bit more water, not and and and, and to harvest with the 14 degrees because I what I will do is I dilute with the water the I dilute the the the, the water. I, as you see, uh, as long as I can, it's very thin. Yeah, yes? I'm going to pause thin. it. Yeah, there the, we go. You, you can see, if you see the Merlot of the Sierra, you are going to, 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 to see. Here you are going to see one here, one. So it's very, very, it's, it's not very productive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you can see that the bunches are very, um, they've got quite a lot of, I mean, obviously they're not mature yet, but there aren't that many grapes on the bunches, are there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and sometimes you have, uh, I don't know, corrimientos, but uh, still you lose from the floration uh, you, you, to the fruit, you, you still lose some, some, some parts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see that you've had a little bit of, um, uh, you've either had a sulfur treatment recently uh, mm -hmm. to help with the, to the, with the mildew. Um, yeah. yeah. It is brilliant, this video. It's great. And tell me, because I was going to ask about the irrigation. Um, so you only irrigate when it's necessary. Um, yeah, normally we, we don't need to irrigate because the, the roots, they are coming, they are, they are getting, uh, they're getting down and they're going to, 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 to obtain the, the, the water they, the, the, they need. So normally we don't need to, 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 to irrigate this. Uh, this year, for example, it was uh, in fact too much water, yeah. So, but yes, yes, in in summer or yes before the harvest, yeah, to maintain the degree, yes. There's, 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 yeah. And anyone who wants this video, by the way, just um, ask me because uh, it's brilliant because you do you see all the different grape varieties. We'll see as we go through, uh, but it is fantastic. And I noticed, Jose, between the rows, you have cover crops of wildflowers, and you don't obviously use any herbicides. Um, how do you sort of work the vineyards to keep the health of the vines? Um, do you plough it, or what? What do you do? Yeah, to... in in winter, in winter uh, after the harvest, where we 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 put, uh, I mean, we uh, we grow oats just to maintain the the, the soil uh, very flush, yeah, very very, and and then when it comes to spring, we cut it off. Um, but um, but the, the the kind of herbs is the is the natural herbs that uh, they are they are uh, they are, well, they, are they are yeah. But normally yes, I I, I have a, a vegetal cover during the during the the winter till the till the spring and then I I I, I cut yeah. And the oats they help preserve the. Um, oh, hold on, I might turn. I'll pause it for a minute. <laughs> the oats they preserve the. Um, um, they preserve some of the moisture. They put a little bit more more sort of hummus in the soil, don't they? So that there's more moisture yeah, retention over maintain, the summer. They are going to maintain the soil uh, without uh, without getting soil. They are going to, to 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 maintain very very soft the, the the soil. They are not going to add any kind of uh, nitrogen or any kind of uh, adding uh, to the to the to the soil. But it's true that they are going to maintain it very very much more soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to move into the winery now. It's not as relaxing or mindful, <laughs> uh, but this is the this is where it all. This is the heart of the winery, isn't it, Jose? So yeah, it is. It's, it very, it's very small. It's, 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 a, it's a garage winery. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I've gone back. I've gone back. Ah, oh, computers. Who'd have them? 
hold on i'm gonna have to I'll, I'll fast forward up to the joys up to the winery um so because your production how many bottles do you produce jose i produce uh, around fifteen thousand bottles yeah uh, which is tiny um mm -hmm. and do you are you hearing the music guys at the same time i've turned the music off because it it was yeah. it's lovely mm -hmm. music but it you can't hear jose speaking when uh, i can hear it but uh here we go. So, Jose, tell us a little bit about all these barrels and what you use yeah, well, to ferment. What I, need, what, I, what I use is five, four, uh, four uh, wood uh, tronco, troncoidal, troncoidal to receive the, the, the wine, the, the two big ones. Four liters are for the Merlot and the Shiraz, the two are small for the Manto Negro and the, and the Gorgoyasa, yeah. So the, the normally the fermentation we are going to do in, in oaks, we are going to do with two pijas daily. Uh, we, uh, Merlot, Shiraz, they are coming at the beginning of September, uh, Mantonegro in the middle, and Gorgoyas at the end of September normally. And, uh, and then we are going to do this um, uh, fermentation without Without extracting too much, without extracting too much, the, the just with two PCS daily, and uh, after the, the the fermentation, we try to do the malolactic in the deposits. That, that means that uh, it's the one year that we have to to, to pass to, to because the, the it was cold and the the the, the, the malolactic couldn't couldn't do it in the deposit but normally we try to do it in the deposit and then goes to the to the to the barrels yeah we use barrels of 225 and uh, 500 liters 35 are 500 and uh, and and 65 of 225 and we use new barrels new one year two years old barrels for the merlot and the shirab much more tannic and Mantonegro and Gorgoyasa we use for uh, yeah three and four year barrels in order not to to to, to mark a, a lot with the with the with the wood yeah yeah because this um, this wine is just it you wouldn't even you wouldn't you wouldn't notice any wood on it the texture is lovely and you can see that it's had some time in oak but it doesn't taste of wood as such but even your um, Zanat. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. wine which is Merlot and Syrah and what's the other variety in that one? Mantonegro, Gorgoyas and sometimes Cayet. Sometimes I buy, uh, I buy some Cayet uh, also, yeah. some maybe 1,000 kilos just to have it, just to have the three Mallorcan varieties. Especially, especially for the Catmo, for the, because the Catmo is, is made out of 50% of Shira and 50% of the three other varieties, the Mallorcan varieties, yeah, yeah, to, to give more elegance to the, to the, to the Shiraz. Yeah. yeah, it is lovely because, um, and how did you decide like which international varieties you were going to blend with the indigenous varieties? Because it's, it's not... It, well, it, uh, are the two French? Well, Shiraz was sure because, I mean, uh, Shiraz uh, for me is a, is, a, is a very, very Mediterranean uh, variety and, and it, is, it gives very, very well in the round, of course, mm. and in, in, in the Mediterranean in general. So for me, Shiraz it was it was quite clear. And as I, I, I tell you, I don't like Cabernet out of the out of the region or out of the latitude. Yeah? So the second one was the, the Merlot. Mm. And, and that uh, makes a lovely rounded feel to the wine, doesn't it? Because it's I know in the in the Zanet, it it just it makes it earlier drinking. It gives it a bit more plusher feel, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, who does anyone? Who's um, ah? The father's joined us. Uh, I think that was my fault because I didn't email him the link. Um, so <laughs> you'll have to watch the recording. But um, who's got a glass of? Uh, has anyone got a glass of the Kanzana in their hands? I know that Declan went home with one, but he's not on. He's obviously delivering late, and he'll catch up later. But do, who's? Anyone want to say what they're drinking this evening? All very quiet. Everyone shy. Andy, mm -hmm. you had a glass of wine. What's in your glass of wine? Yeah, unmute, unmute yourself, Andy. Andy, that's it. I have uh, no. I'm drinking. I'm uh, up to American wines. I'm up to Napa Valley. Oh, Andy, we'll have to pull you back. You'll have to try <laughs> the Kansas. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. I'm no. uh, just I'm just like kind of jumping across the world. Uh, yeah. Every week I have something else. Now I'm in US. Sorry. Okay. And what's your alcohol on your um, American wine on your? Uh, well, I have to go and check the bottle. But oh, I don't believe worry. Is, I believe it's 14. Yeah. You see. Oh, well, this it's is Napa the, Valley. This is this is the joy of these Mallorcan wines. They they pull back the alcohol beautifully. I mean, this is 12 and a half, and I've been sipping my glass gently and. Uh, and you wouldn't, you know, it's having, well. It sounds, a like, sounds a lot like uh, Pinot, like Pinot Noir, as you yeah, said. Yeah, there are yeah. some resemblances, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone else is hiding behind a black screen. Uh, what's the father got in his glass? Is he, uh, you know, he's on mute. Unmute yourself, father. There we are. Oh, there we go. Good evening, Good evening Jose. My... my my, I hope it's one of yours. It's on its way. It's very hard to get <laughs> <up around. laughs> um, um, I'm a bit late, I'm afraid, because somebody didn't um, zoom me in or whatever. No, I'm very yeah. bad on things. Yeah. yeah, well, I think you're here. You'll have to catch up later. And Jose, do you, which is your favorite wine out of the range? <sighs> it's like it's, asking which is your favorite child. It's, 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 depending, depending, depending where, depending where. And, um, of course, uh, no, but depending, depending the situation, and, and sometimes, sometimes I prefer, for example, from the two more uh, different ones, the Gorgoyasa and the Manto Negro, I start to prefer the Kumas, the Manto Negro is maybe, is, 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 is round, is, is perfect, long, but uh, in one moment, mm, tasting the Gorgoyasa and the Manto Negro, ah, I would prefer the Gorgoyasa, so it's, it's, it's difficult to, 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 to choose one of them. Yeah. And, um, I'm loving the gorgolasa tonight, but it really needs food. I should have some, a nice sit, bit of venison with this would be delicious. Bit of protein to soften those tannins because the tannins are quite, they're quite strong on it. It's a real food wine. Mm -hmm. um, I've become a big but fan if, of- if you, if you start, for example, with, the, with a bit cold, um, mm. you can eat a fish also with, the, with it without no problem. Or you have it in a, in a, in a degustation menu from a Michelin star uh, restaurant. You are going to start a bit fresh with the with the, the entrees, and then you are going to finish a bit, yeah, much more, uh, much hotter uh, with the with the with the with the meat, and it's going to accompany very well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see that. And actually, funny you said that because I was driving. I went to collect it from the shop this afternoon, and I was driving back because I have the Cadmo here, uh, and I love the Cadmo, but I wanted I wanted the big boy to have for the tasting. I thought, you know, let's let's open the big guns. Um, cause the Cadmo I've personally bought myself, um, because it's just lovely just to have, you know, open a bottle. It's very easy. It, it actually goes with, as you say, it can go with a lot of foods. You know, that's the wonderful thing about these wines. They're not intrusive yet. They have structure. Um, mm -hmm. and the white, this, the Sabia, is it the Sabia? No, what's the name of the white? My, sorry, Suriel, Suriel, uh, Suriel. And that is delicious because again, that has so much personality and character in it. Um, mm. And again, that's because of the blends of the, the indigenous varieties. And I love the fact the father's actually looking up the uh, blends now in the in the <laughs> <laughs> in the uh, wine list, um, mm. so that uh, he can be the font of all knowledge on this in a minute when we ask him some questions. But does anyone have any questions? Because it is fascinating. Um, you know, we'll talk about. We've mentioned the fact that Merlot and Cabernet and Syrah. Um, or all those international varieties. And, and in fact, Syrah and Merlot are used within these wines. But I think what's special about these is the fact that their indigenous varieties are used. And these are the varieties that have been used for generations on the island, aren't they, Jose? So your fathers and your forefathers and, you know, people have been making wines with these grapes because they work in Mallorca. And I think that's a really good trend to follow around the world. And I'm always trying to persuade people um, to not go for the obvious international varieties, but to go for the local grape varieties because they're the best wines, aren't they? The best expression of terroir um, mm -hmm. from where they come. And, um, you know, as you can see on the screen, they're not, they're not cheap wines, but, uh, you know, you're paying for the fact that they're, well, they're utterly delicious. And, and I was writing notes earlier and saying they're very compar comparative to Pinot Noir, Nebbiolo. None of these are cheap wines because they have longevity in the bottle. Uh, they go very well with food. They have great complexity. And also we were talking about yields. They have quite low yields. So you're not producing as much wine. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's impossible to make uh, real, to, 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 not even uh, to, to, to reach break point with these quantities. It's, it's, it's just impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Harry, Jerry here, just an observation. No way, Turnery, if you've got Lista Negro, the kind of the local grape variety there. And I, I agree with you in terms of it's nice to have indigenous grape varieties from the region. And it, always you find a wine will go well with the local food as well. So um, I think it's great to see indigenous grape varieties coming through from Mallorca. It is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, um, I find it fascinating, all these wines coming from these islands, because people, you know, they'll go and they'll... They'll, and what's amazing is you go on holiday there and, and Jose, you probably don't sell that many of your wines on the island? Not really, no. Um, I've got a couple of distributors in the, in the island, but uh, not really. I mean, my distribution is very atomized. I mean, uh, maybe yeah, you have in Switzerland or in yeah. Luxembourg no? or in... Uh, yeah. and, but, but maybe normally, in, in Mallorca, you can sell the 60, 70 percent of the of the wine, and the other goes to. For me, no. For me, it's just the opposite. Yeah, I yeah. have um, you in Ireland, or I have uh, Casa del Vino in Switzerland, or, or in Luxembourg. Uh, so, so it's a, it's a bit very very atomized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's fascinating, and I I um I think um for those of you watching either live or when this is um, played back on um because it's it'll be available uh, to be watched on playback, uh, I would definitely recommend going out and tasting these wines because yeah they excited me the first time that I tried them, Jose, uh, and so much so that we've got them here in Ireland now, and that I've got a case or two in my wine room in the back. Um, so they are delicious and thank you so much for coming on and talking about them because it's just fascinating to hear someone with your insight who started this project and has seen it through and is seeing, you know, despite COVID slowing you down maybe a little bit, uh, is, has seen it, it, it really turn into a success. What with the labeling, the packaging is fantastic. The wines are delicious, uh, and, um, we can only try and help grow it together. It's very exciting. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Thank Jose. You. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jose. Yeah. Thanks so you. I'm going to say thank you to everyone. And uh, sorry about the mix up on Zoom meetings. Hopefully, we haven't got a whole core of people on the other one. They can watch it on record. It'll be okay. Jose, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Harry. Okay. Harry. Bye. I'll try and uh, close yeah. it off now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It takes a while for me to um, close it. There we go. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.